Hey everybody, this is Steve and we're all called to a life of service. In the last episode, we talked about why bishops begin their service to a particular diocese when they're enthroned. That's because back in June, the new Archbishop of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America was enthroned here in New York. And I've been excited to get to know him from the moment I read the first message that he sent to us here in America. I am coming to be your spiritual friend and brother, your servant in the Lord, your co-worker in Christ, and your fellow steward of all the gifts of God that have been bestowed upon the Greek Orthodox faithful of America. I was really struck with the way Archbishop Elbidophoros emphasized the importance of service, of working together to make the most of the gifts that God has given us. So I invited the Archbishop to join us today to share a little more about what he has in mind. Your Eminence, thanks for joining us. Steve, it's good to be with you and all the faithful who are watching. May God's blessing be upon you all. I admit that I'm both excited and nervous about what is to come, because being appointed to lead an archdiocese is not like a regular job. It's not like receiving a promotion or anything like that. There is a lot of work that lies ahead, and I hope that God will make me worthy worthy to carry the burden he has placed on my shoulders. Yet, I also rejoice because service is at the core of our lives as Christians. That's right. The example we received from Jesus himself is not one of taking, but of giving. And service is an expression of the unconditional love that our Lord has for us all. Jesus Christ, as we know, is the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. And he acts very differently than the pagan gods that cultures had been worshiping for as far back as we can remember. Whether it's Zeus or Athena or Odin or Thor, the pagan gods tended to be a very petty group. They acted in the way that any of us would act if we had incredible power. They acted selfishly and greedily. They lied to each other and they stole from each other and they usually weren't good to the mortals who worshiped them. If the pagan gods noticed you, they were probably going to turn you into a tree or something horrible like that. On the other hand, consider these beautiful verses from St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians. He describes Christ not like the proud gods of paganism, but as someone truly humble, as someone truly willing to serve. Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. That's exactly right, Steve. When we look at Jesus hanging from the cross, we finally see what it is to be God, is to be humble, loving, willing to sacrifice everything. And as you explained back in episode 30, Jesus on the cross also shows us what it is to be a truly human being. And it's much the same, being humble and loving. But humility and love are things we need to develop over time. If you have ever spent time with a little child, you know how hard it can be for us to do simple things like share or even to say thank you. Our lives are meant to be spent moving away from this pettiness, this immaturity, this selfishness, and becoming true icons of Christ. People who love unconditionally. People who are willing to serve their neighbor. Your Eminence, I've been blessed to travel across the country leading retreats and giving talks. From little children to parents and grandparents, from youth group volunteers to clergy, there are so many talented and faithful people in the church. There are so many people who can offer so much to build up the body of Christ and reveal the true beauty of the church. Not as an homage to an abstract idea or memory, but as a reality in towns and cities across the country. This is the dream that I have for the church here in America. God has given us the gifts 
has given us the talents we need to feed those who are hungry, to comfort those who are lonely, to clothe those who are naked, to comfort those who are sick and imprisoned. While we must continue to profess the unchanging Orthodox faith, doing so without action means that faith becomes a mere idea, mere philosophy. We must be known as Christians not merely by the books we read or the words we speak, but by our actions in this world as we learn to love our neighbors as Christ himself loves us, a love revealed in how he gave himself on the cross. So, my first question to you, my beloved in the Lord, is this. What will you do in your community? What gifts has God placed in your hands? And how will you use them to make His love visible? Not hypothetically, not on some future day, but today, right after you watch this video. That's the first question. The second comes from something else I would like to mention before we go. Because service is not simply about the good things we do in the world. While the church must be charitable, we are far more than a charity. If we truly want to emphasize service, then we must also emphasize the services. This is something Steve explored with great depth in episode 31 of Leave the World, a great video series exploring the Sunday Gospel and epistle readings. Our charitable service must go hand in hand with our commitment to the divine services. We serve God when we serve our neighbors, and we glorify God when we gather to worship Him. Worship is something we, of course, do every Sunday morning in the liturgy, but there is no reason that worship should only occur on Sunday morning. There is no reason the altars in our churches should be ignored the rest of the week. So, my second question to you, my beloved in the Lord, is this. Are we willing to attend one additional service during the week? Whether it's a feast day liturgy, or a Vespers, or Compline, or supplication service, can we gather together a little more often to thank God for all He has done for us? I believe that with God, all things are possible and that, by God's grace, we can be a holy people of service. So let's be the bee and serve both God and neighbor. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next time. On your right, check out our new series on youth safety, something incredibly important you really need to watch. Below that, check out another great video from Y2AM. And if you haven't yet, remember to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, and God bless you.